in the spring of 1992, I started a new job in Hampshire and I saw this little handwritten flyer like in the local Whole Foods shop, you know, and it was literally written with biro and photocopied in the local library. And it said there was a demonstration at a place called Twyford Down. And I thought, oh, that sounds interesting. I'll go and have a look. And I remember taking my boots off because I didn't want to walk on that soil, on that turf with my shoes on. It was one of the most beautiful places I've ever been in my life. And I just couldn't believe that this place was about to be destroyed for a motorway. And that was my beginning, really. And the Union Jill was part of that story. I took a job with the Wildlife Trust after studying conservation and I moved in a house with Helen and Helen introduced me to the events of Twyford Down. It had special scientific interest, it had Iron Age hill forts, wildflower grassland of chalk which is really rare and I just thought this is the most designated area and it's just not being saved. In fact they're, they're purposely going through it because it's a green space and it made me so angry. Britain was just becoming a bleaker and a bleaker and a bleaker place to live. The era that we'd grew up in, so I was what, 10 or 11 when Thatcher was elected to government. So those formative years of my teens were Thatcher's Britain. And I lived in a mining community and I saw what happened to those communities. The backstory to our process was we have had enough. And it was a really strong feeling that I think many of us experienced at that time. We'd been the first people who'd been involved in direct action at Twyford Down. We then set up a group to support other people doing the same thing. And one of our number was a really good artist, a guy called Jay Redman. He came back one day with this magazine, I can't even remember what it was. And in it there was a sort of digital version of a Rainbow Union Jack. And he sort of put it in front of me and said, what do you reckon Helen, do you think we could make one of these? And I said, yeah, it's easy. I came home with a sort of bag of ragtag bits of fabric and we laid it out on the sitting room floor, cut everything up, pieced it all together, and then we started sewing it. And that was the point when Heather came in, because we started sewing it by hand. And I had a sewing machine. <laughs> <laughs> so that was me for the rest of the night, wasn't it? Right into the early morning. It did feel quite subversive. We wanted something that reflected the alternative culture of Britain. I'm from an immigrant family, but I still love this country. But it needs to be bright and it needs to be cheerful and it needs to be something we've made ourselves, even if it's out of scraps sewn together. <laughs> After we made the flag for Twyford Down, it went to the M11, Claremont Road, it went to Newbury, Bypass. I was a big participant in that. They had special licensed police climbers. We used to have harnesses and we'd prussic and get up to the top of the trees where the branches are so thin that they couldn't evict us. And then the chainsaw man came up and he, he sawed all the branches underneath me whilst I stood up there all day. And all around me was raging fires of the forests burning. It really felt like apocalypse. The only way they built that road was to bring in hundreds of security guards every day. I mean, literally coach after coach after coach of men in yellow high vis And they stood shoulder to shoulder around a ring of trees. And then they cleared everybody out of that circle and cut those trees down. And it was like inch by inch by inch. That was the only way they built that road, day after day after day. You know, you woke up in the morning to this sound of chainsaws and people shimmering yellow in the dawn. And that was all I dreamt for years. I have a huge interest in the whole history of dissent in this country, from you know the Peasants' Revolt in the 1300s and the enclosure of the Commons, right through to the women at Greenham Common, and it's often forgotten. We listen to the great stories of the day, we listen to the wars and the heroes and everything else, but there's a terrific story of dissent, and the stories are important because you learn from them, and you also take hope from them. I see what we did in those days as just part of that story and of that legacy and part of a long history that will go on.